Thanks for sharing your garden with us. And right now we're going to be turning our attention to two young individuals who are starting their, are about to start their careers in landscape architecture. They're students from Texas A&M University, and we're pleased to have them on the program. Ixchel Granada, uh, who's a Master of Landscape Architecture candidate at Texas A&M, and Aaron Coatwall, who is uh, uh, working on his undergraduate degree there in landscape architecture. And it's great to have both of you here. I love talking to young people who are about to enter whatever field they're joining, but mm -hmm. especially landscape architecture with me. Uh, you know, and I, I'm curious, what got you interested in it? What, what lights you up about landscape architecture? Yeah. Well, for sure, um, it's sustainability. It's a passion for sustainability, but it's also a passion for connecting people to the power of the outdoors, mm -hmm. connecting people to nature, and connecting people to other people because I feel like in outdoor spaces we're a little bit more at ease. Mm -hmm. Aaron, what was it for you? Well, I think for me, um, one of the things that really got me into landscape architecture was the, uh, I guess, the subconscious effects that it has on your soul and mm -hmm. how it really does feed that. And uh, I know my favorite place that I've places that I've been to have been outdoors yeah. and uh, trying to bring that to other people is, yeah. is a beautiful thing. You know, there's a real famous quote about architecture. Winston Churchill said that it, we shape our buildings and afterwards they shape us. And I think mm. the same is true of our outdoor spaces, right? You yes, know, sir. Yeah. It shapes your soul. It shapes the way you feel every right. single day. It sure does. What are some of the big challenges you're, that you see facing uh, landscape architects as, as they head out at, uh, and to do their work today? I'll we'll start with you on this one, um, Aaron. I would say urban sprawl is a big issue. Mm -hmm. So as the population keeps growing, we need to use more and more resources. So mm -hmm. how we use those resources effectively is as far as our water and um, I guess our land space and things of that mm -hmm. nature. So it's not just about gardens. We'll talk about gardens too, but it, this is this really landscape architecture applies to the way we build our communities, not just uh, you know somebody's backyard. Absolutely, and I'd like to second that. I think land use changes. Um, you see in Austin, it's growing at such a fast rate, and right. traffic, mm -hmm. and all of these other issues, and so land use is really changing, and people still need places that they can. Yeah connect outside. Yeah, we need those gathering places and places that yeah. draw us outdoors, mm -hmm. you know. If everything's homogenous and the same, you know, that, that's why people stay indoors and watch TV, I think, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the, um, let's talk about ex the difference between a landscape architecture and a, like a garden designer. How do you see that difference, mm -hmm. Ixchel? Well, um, I, I respect uh, the gardener's ability to use masterfully use form, texture, and color. And some of the landscape architects that I most admire are able to do that and then add a piece of functionality to it and use beautiful planting palettes to maybe reconstruct wetlands or restore stream beds, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, taking that gardener's aesthetic, but mm -hmm. doing it on a large scale. Yes. And then kind of in an engineered way often. Exactly, yeah. Aaron, same question. Yes, uh, along those lines, I guess just the scale and scope of what we do. Um, so you can actually, uh, I guess, build larger structures in the landscape and make it to where it's more of a, um, I guess like Ixchel was saying, more of a, a functional kind of approach mm -hmm. and just, uh, I guess, back to a previous topic we were talking about, um, kind of doing a mixed use park in like a retention pond area or a detention pond area um, as opposed to um, maybe just a residential space. Yeah. But, but you know, all of the spaces are fun to work on, I think, whether yes, it's residential yeah. and small scale of a single family home yeah. or a, in a community wide scale. It's mm -hmm. fun to think about putting things together so they'll have big impact. And yeah. we, you know, uh, one of the challenges I think that often people coming into landscape architecture faces often uh, in the world of architecture, it's like you're dealing with bricks and, and structure and form and building and yeah. materials. But uh, in landscape architecture, you've got also to consider living things that uh, depend on care and water and sun and soil, right? Yeah, yeah. And the other interesting thing about you know architecture and landscape architecture, working with the outdoor space and the indoor space, and more and more we're seeing that they're trying to flow together. And, right. Yeah. Can making those connections between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, not over engineering is what, kind of where I was heading. And it's like you, you really have to be aware of, of the living organisms, right? Yes, definitely. And I think um, uh, some of my favorite houses that I've been in are the ones with the largest windows that actually 
make you feel like you're outdoors when you're in, indoors. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think something to add to that is uh, kind of the movement of the landscape that happens. That's something you don't see in the uh, firm things like bricks or, or different building materials. You actually get to see movement with the wind and things of that nature. Yeah, well, I mean, it's one of the aesthetic joys of gardening is that constant shifting, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Now, I know we both of you all have mentioned sustainability in, in a sense, um, either directly or indirectly. When you talk about sprawl, I think you're talking about you know the opposite of that, which is a more sustainable future. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the big challenges on uh, sustainability that we need to face uh, as communities and, and, and that you will be facing as individual practitioners? Uh, we've been asked this question a lot in, in, in the classroom and in conferences, and time and time again I hear water just come up over and over. Um, whether you're dealing with uh, drought conditions or flood conditions, how to manage water so we meet our needs and we're still able to um, sustain beautiful wildlife and habitat. Mm -hmm. So on-site water management certainly is a challenge. It is an enormous challenge. You know, and I think one of the big difference often with uh, somebody who's trained as a landscape architect is knowing how to keep control water around a home or an office building or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So trying to shed the water away from the structure, but at times being able to utilize it um, mm -hmm. within the landscape and making sure that you choose those correct plants uh, for the area and looking at sunshade patterns and things of that nature. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it's, it's something that's definitely vital and needs to be looked into a bit more. Well, I know that each of you have worked on different kinds of projects, and Ixchel, you, you've done some work on with big master plan community kinds of things. So like when we think of that here in Austin, I think of like the Miller development, for mm -hmm, example. Mm -hmm. Miller is an excellent example of a really well thought, well planned, um, intentional community, and they've done some really great things with water, capturing it on site, and then making it a focal point for wildlife and mm -hmm. the people that live there. Right. And then they restored a prairie on site and they did some great outdoor um, playscapes for families, walkable, pedestrian mm -hmm. friendly streetscapes. So those kinds of master plan communities are very intentional. And then, and then you've been working on some some ideas for communities oh, yeah. just like that, right? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, it was an academic exercise mm -hmm. um, in some of our studios. Every semester we do a studio and we did a, a studio project <clears throat> for the Bryan College Station area and um, it was a lot of fun and we built, there was a public library and I designed um, an outdoor library that extended from the indoors to the outdoors. So again, public spaces mm -hmm. connecting to nature and then there was a, a public vent, food vendor space and um, a playscape for children as well. Cool. Yeah. And Erin, I know that you've worked on a variety of projects. Yes, One sir. that we have illustrations of is a residence that was out in the country. Yes, sir. So um, a lot of folks think of uh, maybe urban landscapes, but this was a rural landscape. And uh, in dealing with this, trying to take in the context of the site and really uh, listening to the site and allowing it to uh, speak back to you to the point of it almost designing itself was uh, one of the key things. And I did this with um, during my internship with Teal Design and Landscape, and it was it was a fantastic time. Definitely mm -hmm. a good learning experience. Yeah. Well, you know, when I think about the inspiration behind a career, often. I'm, I, 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 I'm, in my own life, I can think back to growing up in a garden mm -hmm. and knowing how important that was in shaping my mm -hmm. uh, future, really. Yeah. My dad was a gardener. He was the son of a farmer, and we had this kind of wonderful environment to grow up in. I'm curious, uh, do y'all's roots uh, uh, extend down into family gardens? Well, my family's grown coffee on both sides, in uh, Colombia and in Honduras. Okay. Coffee, lots of coffee, maybe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explains a little bit, but yeah. So coffee and, and then the wonderful Act thing is we can grow just about anything, mango trees and avocado and... So yeah. th this has been a part of your heritage, yes. okay? Yes. How about for you, Aaron? And I guess with me, I, I've moved around a lot in my mm -hmm. life, so we haven't really uh, delved into gardening aspects, but um, with each place that I moved to, I would find that outdoor space that would, that would bring me peace. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it be five minutes away or an hour away, I would drive there um, if I needed some type of, uh, I guess, cleansing. Well, it, and like as we started out the program, you talked about how these things impact your soul, and uh, I know that you both hope to do that with clients down the road, That's whether right. those clients be on the Civic 
or on the individual personal scale. And I certainly wish you both uh, great success in your careers and, and appreciate you both being on Central Texas Gardener. Thank you, Thank okay. you so much for having us. This oh, was no, fun. Sir. <laughs> oh, a real pleasure. And uh, coming up next is our friend Daphne.